growth. It's a powerful word for advisors, but how you do it, where you do it, that's a bit of a conundrum. I'm joined today by Lisa Crawford, my good friend, to talk a little bit about the power of growth. So Lisa, talk to me. What does growth mean to most advisors? Yeah, so we asked them the question, they're like, AUM, revenue, and it's like, okay, but is that really the right measure? Yes. Hopefully they're thinking about it a few different ways. So I always like to start with personal growth. Are you actually achieving the success that you set out for in your firm? Because this business, you can have a lot of different types of firms. You can run your business in a lot of different ways. And success means different things to different people. So let's hope that one, it aligns with what they set out to accomplish in the first place. But I hope also that they're thinking about how their people are growing, how their clients are growing. Are they, are they profitable in the way that they're serving their clients? And yes, AUM and revenue obviously play a big role in that as well. But let's hope that it's a little bit of a broader definition. And then we get into the topic that everyone loves to talk about, m and Is right. that really growing? Uh, maybe, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. So you know, if we, we think about growth beyond the transaction, when the transaction is made, was it a really one plus one equals five transaction? Or are you simply just adding on expenses and revenue and continuing on in the same trajectory? It's fascinating because it really it sounds like it starts with why do you want to grow? It should, right. I, I, ho I hope it does. Right, but most advisors are zoom ahead to how they're going to grow, the, the deal they're going to make, the right. private equity dollars they're going to need to do that deal. Right. And don't think about, well, why do I want to do this? Yeah, they should be able to answer, like, what kind of firm am I trying to build? Right. And how do I want to exit this firm? Right. And if they're not thinking about the exit, even if they're a 40-year-old founder or a CEO or an executive, they should still be thinking about what what the exit should look like because that should be what drives them to the success. Like when you were a kid and you got the maze at McDonald's on the placemat, if you started at the end, it was always easier. So it's the same there thing with go. growth. Exactly. You've got to start with the end in mind or else then yeah. you're in real trouble here. Yeah. And that guides then what people you hire, what roles you put them in, even what technology you end up using and how you end up using it. All of those things play a big role. Because if you start at the beginning, here's how much money I have, here's all the PE dollars I have, then if you're trying to get to a means to that, to an end you haven't created yet, yeah. that's when you're in real trouble here. Absolutely. So you yeah. were talking about it yesterday, how you want to grow yeah. is really instructed by the people you have in place and where you put them yeah. on your team. Yeah. So when you think about the people for growth to happen, what are some of the roles? What are some of the thought process so you have the right people in place for your growth to really happen? Yeah, so it's kind of the, what we talked about 10 years ago maybe about like your receptionist is not just you know the lowest right. person in the firm like, that's the first person that your clients meet when they walk in the door just like your marketing shouldn't be done by some intern in college because they understand how social media works right, right? so i love seeing firms that are leaning into hiring true marketing people we're working with a firm right now that have, has had an admin in their office and she's always shown an interest in marketing and now they're supporting her to go get a degree in marketing and work full time with them and her career path has just opened up into this big, wonderful world of marketing for advisory firms. So I love seeing firms kind of leaning into that and realizing that if you're going to do marketing, you need people, you need resources and you need to put efforts behind that. Um, and I love seeing, I was just talking to somebody else, they just opened a training center for their wow. people. I love seeing firms really understanding that this is such a talent heavy business and talent requires development and that takes time. So train your managers how to manage people. Train your organization how to be a people first organization. And the culture starts from the top. So right. everyone's got to participate. Those are two things for me that stand out right now. Now you said it yesterday, so I'm just stealing your line here, but you got to put A people in A roles. Don't yeah. put B people in A roles. And that's yeah. hard for some advisory firms because those B people were people you hired at the beginning. They were, you yeah. know, your buddy from down the block, you know, this person was your admin, so she should stay in that role. You have to, as you grow, adapt your people too, and that's really important. Yeah. But culturally, that can be a hard thing to fix. Yeah, and maybe you have an A person who's B at their job. You can develop that. Right. It's harder to develop a B person into an A person. Right. Well, I'm fascinated by all of this because now you started with it, but I like to end with it talking about inorganic growth. Yes, yeah. that's the sexy way to grow. It's really fascinating. We bought this firm, it's doing great for us, but how should you wait? How do you make sure you're intentional about really the acquisitions you make? Yeah, so if you're not, if you don't have an integration team, then I think you're setting yourself up for failure. Not just on the technology side, obviously that's important, but 
you know, I've run one portfolio management system for a firm. I can't imagine trying to run two. Like, let's get that stuff aligned and make sure that that's done. But get the people aligned too. I think there's a lot of uh, uncertainty in those transactions for the acquiring firm and the acquired firm of how does my role shift, how does my job shift, but be really, really intentional about the post-transaction integration, right? It's like kind of like when you're pregnant, like there's so much excitement leading up to it and then you have a baby, you're like, I have a baby, and you're like, oh my God, I have a baby, yes. right? Like it, the work didn't stop just because you got a baby, right? right? That's really when the work begins. Right. So, I'm always amazed that they just let you leave the hospital with a baby. I know. <laughs> that, that, oh, that amazed me with my, yeah, with my first yeah. son. But it's always amazing to get a chance to talk to you and, and really the big takeaway, be intentional, and know your why before you start growing. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Lisa, some amazing insights. Always great to talk to you. So good to see you, Matt. Thank Thanks you for so having much. Me. Reg TV, I'm Matt Ackerman. She's Lisa Crawford. Have a great day.